Hey, Hare Krishna, I met my uh, son's archery club, so today I thought I'd talk about lessons we can learn from archery. This is my first time doing a uh, Facebook Live with a camera that actually works. I finally bought a new phone, and i um, trying it out now. So it's been a while since I did a Facebook Live, but I thought I'm waiting here, doing, um, waiting here for my sons to finish the archery. They, uh, just show you, they just disappeared off into the uh, forest over there with their bows and arrows, you know. They've gone off to um, hunt wild animals. Well, not really. Um, <laughs> they've gone to um, practice their shooting. They do actually have wild animals there, but they'd like pretend, you know, so. Have you noticed in Mahabharata that all of the problems start when the kings go out to hunt the wild animals? You know, to start with Mahabharata, you've got um, Maru Shantanu, he's going out on the side of the Ganga and uh, as he's hunting out there he comes across this beautiful lady and then you know it all starts from there and then um, in so many examples um, King King Dashara also had problems when he went out hunting um, doing archery he accidentally killed a he killed the son I think it was Gee, you're trying to remember how it worked exactly. He killed someone, <laughs> and uh, it caused them so many problems. And uh, time after time in the Mahabharata, you hear these stories about these kings that go out hunting with their bows and arrows and getting themselves in trouble. So anyway, I hope that my sons don't come across any, um, you know, beautiful damsels that will get them uh, in trouble. Hopefully they'll um, learn some good lessons and, um, you know, have a good chance to learn some skills. So what, what is it we can learn from archery that's related to Krishna consciousness. Well, the, f the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, a story, again from Mahabharata, that you may remember. Now, this story involves um, the Pandavas and Duryodhana, and they're studying with um, Dronacharya at the ashram, at the Gurukul. And Dronacharya is asking them to aim at this target, and if I remember right, it was a bird. And Dronacharya said, I want you to shoot an arrow through the eye of that bird. All right, this is the story. In fact, I think there's a publishing company, I believe it's Bhakti Tirtha Swami. He has, as the image of his, uh, of his logo, you know, on his books, it's something to do with um, shooting the eye of the bird. Anyway, so this is the story where they're trying to shoot the eye of the bird. And first of all, Duryodhana gets up there. I might, might get the sequence wrong, but this is the gist of it. And Yudhisthira says, what can you see? I remember when I was a teacher, we did this as a Sanskrit play. I, um, I wrote a very simple version of this in Sanskrit. So he gets up there and um, Dronacharya asks Duryodhana, Kim Kim Pashati, what can you see? And Duryodhana says, oh, I see a bird, and I can see the sky, and I can see you, and I can see everybody, and Dronacharya says, get out. You're not qualified. You know, you're not focused. So who's next? So then, um, I'm just going to try to change this color here. I was doing some fancy tricks. It's looking a little bit bright. Just a second. I think I click on this one. Was it that one? Nope. Okay, we'll just leave it then. Maybe turn the brightness down a little bit. Okay, sorry about that. It's getting used to this new phone. It's way better than the phone I used to have. But at the same time, it's not perfect. So let me just... Ah, here we go. What do you think? A bit dull, isn't it? Yeah, let's go back to the pop. Pop. So as I was talking about focus, before I got distracted, hmm, funny that, isn't it? Um, now all these things are on the screen I can't get rid of. Uh, maybe I have to click on this. Oh, okay, we're back. Sorry about that. <laughs> Just giving an example. You know, I was deliberately doing that to show you how easy it is to get distracted, you know? Uh, anyway, so getting back to the story, we've got these um, Pandavas and Kauravas who are in the ashram with Dronacharya, and they're looking at this um, target. So Duryodhana's been sent away. Dronacharya said, look, you're not focused. You see everything. 
So then the next one who gets up, I, I forget exactly who it was, someone else, maybe you just here, he says, what do you see? He says, I see the bird. And then he says, what else do you see? He says, oh, I see the bird. No, not good enough. Away you go. Then when Arjuna went up there, then Arjuna said, I only see the eye and nothing else. So it was then that Dronacharya said, you were qualified. Shoot. And so this is a lesson that we can learn from, these, from this uh, story, is to be very focused. So when the um, Pandavas and the Kauravas were at the ashram and they were looking at um, shooting the target, Dronacharya was not satisfied until they were totally focused on the eye of the bird. So in the same way with us, we have to be very clear about what's our ultimate um, goal. You know, just like in archery, whether you're aiming at the eye of the bird or you're aiming at a target, you want to be focusing right in the middle of that bullseye, not getting distracted by outside things. And to give an example of what a bullseye, you know, would mean, we all know what a bullseye looks like, it's like a circle, right? And in the middle is a very small target and they get bigger as they go out. So in our life, there's the really important things that we should be focusing on. And then there's other things which are good, but not so important. And then there's some things when you get really um, out uh, from the center of the circle that are really not that helpful at all. So there's a saying that I picked up from Stephen Covey, which is that the enemy of the best is the good. So on that target, you know, there may be certain things which um, it may be, there may be good things to do. But if we put our energy towards those things, it can distract us from the really important things. Um, I'm just thinking of another saying that came from Brigapati Prabhu, my, uh, my mentor. Good, better, best. Never let it rest till your good becomes better and your better becomes best. So let's have a look at that and how it relates to what I'm talking about here. It's not possible to become the best at anything if you're always getting distracted and trying to do many things. Uh, I just recently shared something on uh, Facebook, just yesterday I think, where Srila Prabhupada was saying that we should be, we should be, so I think he said basically, okay at everything. You know, we should have a basic competency in general matters. But we should know, oh, you know he said, we should know something about everything, but we should know everything about something. And so the same thing in our life, we should have basic skills that we need, you know, to survive. We shouldn't be um, totally one-dimensional in that we can't function. You know, we need to be a little self-sufficient. Um, but at the same time, we have to choose some specialty and really become the best at it. And it's not possible to become the best at something when you're trying to do too many things at once. So this has been a really big challenge for me, um, particularly the last few years where the financial pressure has been strong. There's been times when I've been in a situation where I've, th I've thought, what should I do? And then when I've made my decision, a lot of times I've just chosen to do what's going to make me, apparently make me money uh, right now, or it seems like an opportunity to make money. But what I've experienced is that unless what you're doing inspires you and aligns with you know, your, your passion or maybe a better word than passion for a devotee would be it aligns with your core strength or it aligns with the way I like to think of it it aligns with your calling when you do something that's aligned with you know what, what you feel like Krishna's put you here to do or the way that you really feel called to serve Krishna that's when you can get inspired and that's when you can be great how do you become great at something? it's when you keep practicing it, you keep focused on it and you don't get distracted and over time, no matter how difficult things are, you enjoy that challenge and you keep going and you keep trying and year after year after year, you don't give up. And that's how you get success. The idea of uh, talent is generally w way, way overrated. Um, there's been many books written on this. I was listening to a book recently by Ericsson, he's a Swedish scientist and he's done a lot of research into what makes a gr someone great at something and particularly he was looking at musical practice musical instruments and you know he discovered that the ones that were great they all put in the hours um, and they also 
they focused. They didn't just go through the motions. And this is the point here again. <coughs> Excuse me. Got a bit of a cold. They didn't just go through the motions and, you know, so-called put in the time. I, uh, I have to spend 10,000 hours in order to become an expert. No, it's not enough just to put in 10,000 hours. We have to do it, our practice deliberately so that we can actually get the improvement and benefit from it. You know, you can think about it in terms of musical instruments or sports. You know, if you just go on the golf course and you just kind of swing your club, you may spend many hours there, but you're not going to get much better. Same with playing a violin or a piano or any instrument. And in Krishna consciousness, it's the same. You know, they say that you can chant for many, many lifetimes, but if you don't give up the offenses, you'll never get the goal of um, chanting, which is love of Godhead. So, just to summarize, um, you know, the main point of what I'm getting at today is that if we want to be successful, we have to be focused. So, like in our japa, we have to really concentrate on the holy name. Don't just go through the motions, you know. You don't just turn up at the, um, the archery um, course stand in front of the target and just kind of pull the bow and just let go. It takes concentration. You have to really keep your eye on the target. So in our life, we need to keep our eye on the target, in particular, our goal of serving Krishna. And we want to align everything that we do in our life so it supports our service to Krishna. So for me, um, I've, like I was mentioning before, my, um, I've got a really strong sense of what my calling is in, in serving Krishna. And I've noticed that I've deviated from that focus. Um, even the other day, um, you know, someone called up and said, oh, can you do something for me? I want my website to rank higher on Google. And a few years ago, it's a business that I took up. And I thought, oh, why did I take it up? Was it because I thought, oh, this is a, a great way to serve Krishna? No, I took it up because I thought it would be a quick way to make money. Um, you know, and then when I got money, I could do all the Krishna conscious things. But actually what happened was I spent a lot of time trying to learn those types of things and it wasn't really my calling and so I didn't really do very well at it. You know, I know, I know how to do it, but I'm just not motivated to do it that much. If I'm using those skills to serve Krishna, then I get inspired, okay? So this is what I've um, observed for myself, that what is it that I get really inspired about? And basically what it is is promoting Krishna consciousness and helping other devotees to help devotees and also to help um, uh, to help yeah, to help devotees who've got a talent to uh, help them to market it basically. So at the moment there's a, a few projects that I'm working on. I've got my personal project, the successful Vaishnavas um, um, and Empower and Preach membership. And the idea behind the Empower and Preach membership is to based on the needs and desires of the devotees in that membership, create training and resources and support to help devotees live their dreams, you could say. Uh, in particular, if a, a devotee has a talent and they're wondering, how can I use it for Krishna? Or how can I uh, live my life so that I can do what I really love and make money and serve Krishna at the same time? The motto of Empower and Preach and the motto of Successful Vaishnavas is make money doing what you love together for Krishna. So this is my inspiration. I've looked at my notebooks. For the last 10 years, or at least the last 7 years, I haven't deviated from this vision. My actions may have deviated um, into different areas just from, from the pressure of making money. But now I'm really um, focused on living my life according to that motto finding a way that I can serve Krishna and serve Krishna's devotees uh, in a way that I don't have to get money from elsewhere so that I can put my 100% focus and I can be the best servant of the devotees um, you know, th through this method. So the projects I've been working on, apart from Empower and Preach, is first of all, uh, Jai Sheila Prabhu and Vimala Manaji have just released a book. It's called The Relationship Risk and Remedy. Uh, you might have seen it on Facebook because <laughs> I've been doing some Facebook advertising to help promote it. Now, if you haven't got that book, you should go and check it out. The website is um, Krishna Conscious, no, KC Relationship Book.com. So KC, the letters, Relationship Book.com. And if you go there, they're um, giving away their book for free. You just have to pay for the shipping and handling. And. Um, 
and you can find out this amazing formula that they have developed from their own, I think it's 40 years of experience uh, in married life, and realizing that conflict is, is a, a common thing that comes up, and then if we can learn to deal with it, it'll really you know help uh, you know devote his life. So if you want to improve your relationship or just have some really good tools to be able to deal with conflict, it's an awesome book to check out. So that's one project I've worked on uh, that I'm working on. At the moment, our focus is on the, um, you know, on getting this book out to as many devotees as possible, and then from there we're also going to um, relaunch the um, mastery program that they have, which is an online course. It goes for six weeks, where you can really go into depth with this method and apply it, you know, in your life and make it a habit, because we all know that it's easy to buy a book. And most of the time he ends up on the bookshelf. If we even read a book, we get a little bit inspired, but we often forget. But if we can have some training over a period of time, that's how we can develop um, the skill. So another project which is it's, uh, similar to this, I hope you can hear, my hand was kind of over the mic, I just realized. So another um, project which I'm working on that's really inspiring is a little bit similar. This is with Prada Prabhu. He was the principal of the Hare Krishna school for 10 years, where we worked together. And, um, you know, he's also traveled to many places around the world, and he's, you know, one of ISKCON's foremost uh, educational experts. Um, oh, excuse me. So what we've, um, what we've been working on is we were asking ourselves, how can we help parents to educate their children in Krishna consciousness? What are the challenges that parents face? And so what we realized is that most parents who are devotees want their kids to be Krishna conscious. It's natural, of course. But they're really challenged because they're so busy with their jobs and other responsibilities. They don't have much time. Um, and, even if, and even if they have the desire to help their kids in Krishna consciousness, they don't know, maybe know where to start. Like... Oh, what should I teach first? What should I teach second? Where are the resources? You know, and so on. So what I'm working on with Prana Prabhu is this is a a membership site where each week we provide the um, parents with the resources, just as some simple materials um, and exercises, and even some games like online games and things that some of the things the children can do on their own. But a big part of this program is getting the parents and the kids together to learn Krishna consciousness because we realize that one of the really key elements of learning Krishna consciousness is about the relationship. So it's not enough just to say, oh, okay, go over on the computer and do the Hare Krishna thing while I go and make dinner. Um, there are some activities you know, that kids can do on their own, but a really key element of this program is connecting parents and children. So it's a really exciting project that we're working on, and expecting that to launch uh, also within the next next week or so. Basically, um, we're planning to invite just a small group of um, devotees, um, between 30 to 60 devotees um, from around the world, to participate in this in a pilot program. Um, there will be a fee for it, but it won't be expensive. And then we'll do the program first with that small group of devotees and get feedback. And then shortly afterwards, we'll launch it you know, to the broader devotee community. If you're interested in becoming a, um, you know, being involved in that pilot program, get in touch with me. Um, send me a private message um, on Successful Vaishnavas or even just leave a comment and I can get in touch with you. And uh, we'll see what we can do about... Um, involving you in that program. So initially what we'll do is we'll do a survey and find out you know, what everyone's needs are and then we'll do this pilot, um, pilot program before really going all out to promote this to the devotee community. So these are the kind of projects that I'm excited about. Um, this Relationship Rescue Remedy project that Jai Sheila Prabhu is doing, the uh, School of Bhakti as we call it. Um, which is this project with Prana Prabhu, as well as my own, you know, successful Vaishnavas and Empower and Preach membership site. So, you know, my focus is really in supporting the devotees to support other devotees, you know, like build up a strong community and a strong um, 
a foundation um, amongst ourselves so that we can go out and preach. Um, now, in the Empower and Preach membership site, I'll be looking at different um, topics. You know, I'll be talking about these businesses you know, that I've been working on with Prana Prabhu and Jai Sheila Prabhu, and I'll, I'll share the um, approach, you know, like the marketing that we've done to distribute the book. Uh, I think we've been distributing Jai Sheila Prabhu's book on Facebook for about a month now. Um, I think we've had about 200 people bought the book. You know, we haven't been spending a lot on advertising, but a little bit on Facebook advertising. So it'll be interesting to find out, you know, if you're interested in um, perhaps promoting something to the devotee community or even preaching to the outer wo outside world, I can um, share our experience in doing that and maybe it'll give you inspiration and um, some practical tips how you can do it as well. Um, the same thing with Prana Prabhu's business. Prana Prabhu's idea is a membership site, as, as is the Empower and Preach membership site. So if you're interested in perhaps setting up something like that or would be interested to look at the potential of um, doing something like that, whether it's to a devotee community or to an out, outside um, community, it's something that you know I'm going to be doing training on in the Empower and Preach um, membership site. So, yeah, one of the skills that I have is marketing and in particular internet marketing and therefore I, I'm planning to do a training on how to use the internet to, to spread Krishna consciousness. That's one of my um, you know, big projects. Um, but I'm very open to responding to the needs of the members of our community. So if you have any ideas about a type of training that I could do, maybe you've seen something that I've been doing or maybe it's just a need and you, you maybe you don't know if I've got the uh, I'll be able to help you with it or not. I've got a lot of contacts, and so I'll be able to, you know, find, get access to people who'll be able to help with whatever it is that you want to do. So that's just a little bit of a recap because I've been away for a long time. Um, these are projects I'm working on, projects I'm excited about, and I have to say it's scary. You know, I've, um, I'm making a stand to depend on Krishna. Like at the moment. I'm putting everything into these Krishna conscious projects. I'm not pursuing any other um, avenues, you know, for finance or anything at the moment. I'm just really depending on Krishna. Um, a recent thing that Prabhupada posted as well, that Krishna always looks after his people. He's you know, like the richest person. So when you look after his servant, so you know, I'm just really trying to dedicate my life to serving Krishna and r arranging it in a way that I can do that. Um, but it, but it's you know it's a bit scary you know? <laughs> because um, on paper there's not much happening. But uh, how shall I say it? Uh, you know it's like it's taking a risk to put my um, to put all of my uh, focus into this project. But I really felt that in the past I came very close to developing this as a sustainable you know, a sustainable business and a full time service that I can do to develop. Um, that I can do that will serve devotees. But then I got scared and I went and tried to do other things. And whatever I've tried has never really helped me out. Frankly speaking, you know, I thought, oh, I better stop this and do something else because I really need money. But every time I've done it, I seem to have come, you know, worse off than when I started. So I've just taken it as a message from Krishna. And just to give another example um, to reinforce this, there's been other times where I was trying to make money, even back in 2010. I was, I'd left school, you know, I had a steady job. Then I started to study all different kinds of things that I was thinking I could do to make money. And I paid money on courses and all kinds of things. And the money was going away really quickly. And I just thought to myself, I've had enough of this. Look, money's coming and money's not coming. I'm not going to wait until I have money to go and do some preaching. I'm going to use some of the skills that I've learned uh, and apply it to Krishna consciousness. So uh, I got a few devotees together and we started a program just in this local area here in Massey. And as soon as I made the commitment to that program, some money just appeared in my bank account. Like a substantial amount of money that I didn't expect. It was some shares that my father had bought and somehow or other they wanted to give it to me, you know, and cash it out. So it was amazing. And even recently a similar experience happened where 
you know, I had made that commitment that, yes, I'm going to do this Empower and Preach membership site. I'm actually going to launch it. And I started to prepare the videos, which you haven't seen yet, but <laughs> I recorded them actually, maybe it was back in April, but they're, they're, they're there. And um, again, when I made that commitment, like, I was in a situation where I didn't really know, um, you know, where the net, where money was going to come from next. So I was in a position where I was really short on cash, but my commitment was, <clears throat> let me just commit to this project, and we'll see what Krishna provides. And it's amazing, out of the blue again, you know, a lump sum of money came that I wasn't expecting. So there's been a few other occasions as well where I really felt that. Krishna had arranged things for me where, you know, I was in a situation where I, th I didn't know how I was going to be provided for, but Krishna looked after me. So, <clears throat> so if we keep our focus on Krishna and do whatever we can to serve Krishna according to our nature, according to the mission, and um, according to the way we feel called to serve Krishna, Krishna does look after you. That's my experience. So I'll sign off here. Keep your eye on the target. Keep your eye on that, on the eye of the bird. Don't get deviated. Stay focused, and Krishna will look after you, and you can have a successful life. Hare Krishna.